Hey guys, GameFender back with another Path of Exile video, and this time we have, again, the Cast on Crit, Ice Spear, Inquisitor in the focus of the video, but uh, this time I wanted to talk about build progression and price picking the current gear that we have, because I was planning this for like a couple of days now, and um, I feel like this is kind of time that we talk about this, because I feel like I've just bought my last, my last upgrade for the build today, which is a beautiful 2120 Anomalous Ice Spear, which I've already put in the build. This one cost me around 19 Divines to buy, and it's it's a nice little upgrade. Um, what we're going to be doing is I have like POE trade here, and we're going to be looking up some of the cheaper stuff that you can buy if you're just starting out, starting out the build. And also we're going to be price checking buy items, so you're going to have kind of a, an idea. Like Actually, let me just look up. So we're gonna, you're, you're actually gonna be able to see my precise calculations over what we're doing. So first, uh, there are some mandatory items that you cannot really skip. One of them being is Cosprey's. Now it's the standard one is actually pretty strong because if you just don't do anything special about it, if you're looking up, uh, yeah, just regular Cosprey's. Um, let me actually just look up another calculator because we're gonna we're gonna count the the beginner like entry cost separately from the ones that we're doing currently so you can have a like an idea of how much this all costs now as is, you can see these are pretty cheap you can get them for nine chaos and then you can change the socket colors you need three linked sockets but I feel like it's not really gonna be an issue as you can see as long as you go for something like 25 crit multi in the base and try to go for a relatively high number in both of these. Uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. You can just watch out for your attack speed not being in the bad spot, but in the beginning you're not really gonna care about that. So we're gonna add nine chaos to the beginning cost. And what I have actually is pretty pretty unique. It's um, we have this harvest modifier of um, if you look up quality. We have this one over here, which is 1% increased elemental damage per 2% quality on our weapon before we corrupted it. And if we look it up, it's around like 100 chaos to craft this on. That's going to be your next upgrade. You can you can do that for pretty much free if you don't, if you buy a non-corrupted one. And then I managed to land like the sickest double corrupt ever, which is an addition of a projectile which is the main best in slots thing that you're looking for this build and then also crit chance which doesn't help out a lot but it's still like a, a plus if we were to look up just an additional projectile it's it's two to three divines now damn okay it, it, it's got a lot cheaper i've okay i remember it being somewhere like seven eight divines when i wanted to buy mine but if we also add the enchantment, the price quickly goes up to 25, 45, 110 divines. So, you know, it's 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 not really a cheap one to get something like this because it's really good. So we're gonna add like 30 divines onto the onto the other one. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna count the beginner one. It's gonna be this one. This is the beginner one, which is gonna be calculated in chaos, and this is the current one which is going to be calculated in divines that's just a quick explanation okay so for the next one we have the chest piece which is skin of the lords with iron will on it iron will uh, means that your strength damage bonus applies to spell damage as well it's the five five strength equals one percent melee physical damage that means that for every five strength we also gain one percent increased spell damage so that's a hundred and 12, 112% increased spell damage from coming that. Now, the tricky part in this is actually getting the good sockets and getting something that is not bad. Now, if we look up Skin of the Lords, there we go, and we look up, we need this specific color set because you cannot change the colors, and this is like the optimal way of doing it, having three green, two blue, and one red sockets. So we're gonna do um, three, two, and one. 
And if you just look up some basic one, it's like 10C as you can see, but um, you also need to look up what like Elemental Overload, Avatar of Fire is not really good, Versatile Combatant, I don't even know what that does. You can just look it up on the skill tree. Versa, and we're looking for a... It's, it's this thing. It's max, minus max block. Uh, yeah, whatever. I, I wouldn't really go with this because it kind of kind of stops you from getting max block and you're pretty pretty reliant on having uh, max block in this build. So I wouldn't get that. Agnostic, no way. Ancestral Bond kills your build. But there is some... St Go Ghost Reaver is actually not that bad because then you can have ES, ES Leech. Mm, Imbalance Gun, no Vault Pack, not really. Arrow Dancing. You can, you, you can find something. I, I think I went with... Um, with the stun immunity one, which is this, I had unwavering stance, it cost me 50, 50 chaos, and since we already don't really have evasion, it's <clears throat> it's not really a big trade-off, you have stun immunity, which is pretty strong, so we're gonna add like 30 chaos, let's just be generous and add 30 chaos onto the, onto the beginner cost, and if we look up this exact chest piece, we cannot look it up on Trade Macro. God damn it. Okay. So we need to add also Iron. A run wheel. Okay. Why am I. S am I really this dumb? Yeah, probably. Iron wheel. It's 60 vines. I bought mine for 5. It, the price hasn't really changed, but there is like 2 online. If you look up any, it's. Yeah, it's. I kind of stayed five divines actually. It's pre that's pretty. It's pretty impressive that this could manage to stay this consistent. I will add my five divines. Uh, we will look at the gems later because there are some pretty expensive gems here. Uh, if we look at an Aegis Aurora, for example, if we look at this one, it's like four divines with this current. But if we lower the amount, uh, we shouldn't really be looking at something thirty corrupted. So. Because mine is really good. Aegis Aurora, and if you just look up any, because most of them will do anyway, it's like 200 C, like 220 C, one divine for some. Mm, it's it's still a low roll. It's it's gonna matter a lot because this ES is gonna get bumped up a lot. But uh, you could get something like 333 for one divines, and you just need to find a balance. I would go for anything like this. This is pretty good. And it's not corrupted, so you can just mess around with the sockets easier and still 30 corrupted it. So we're gonna add like 230 chaos for the beginner cost and another 4 divines into the more professional one. And what, what are you also gonna be looking for when you are buying your um, gear is a Cray Kick Vassal. This is a 7C beast, more like 10C beast, and you can do the 30% corruption recipe. I did this with my helm, with my uh, with my Aegis Aurora, and with my boots. So it's you, you will see why later. It's it's just nice to have 30 quality, and when you don't really need any implicits, and you don't want to risk your items. So we could add like a 10C plus onto it, okay? <coughs> Another really important stuff is the Shaper's Touch with Attack, Crit, Implicit. If you want something like this, this is 1.5 Divines for some reason, but it doesn't really matter. If you just look at anything baseline, it's like 20 Chaos, 30, 40 Chaos, I'd say like 50. If, if you want a little bit better one, like at least let's say like 0 0.6, it's like 40, 60, 70, 80, 100 Chaos. And for some reason this... This is at the threshold where it's like 1.5 and the perfect one would be 5 divines, which is just stupid. Because you're not getting that much crit chance anyway. I would just go for something low roll, I got this for pretty cheap. Like this, this was under 1 divine I think. So we're gonna add like 60 to the beginner cost and... Let's go with the current prices, let's, let's say like 2, okay? But uh, I wouldn't pay 2 chaos for this. I mean put in two, 2 divines for this, that is just stupid. Next, the boots that we're using. Now this is not gonna be easy and straightforward I feel like, because this one is 
is pretty special because it has both Tailwind and cooldown reduction. And this is a Sorcerer base, which is again another expensive one and it even has movement speed. Yeah, this has 9 Divines, 26, 40, 50, 200, which is, yeah, whatever. So there is nothing with Chill Avoidance, but yeah, whatever. And, and it even has like, yeah, I would say it's it, it's like mid, mid uh, ES, it could have way more. But it also has a lot because of the 30 quality. So something like this at the high end, it's, you, you can get something like, my I got mine for 7 Divines, so I'm gonna add that. But for the beginning, like for like cheaper, you can get stuff which is pretty easy because you don't really need Tailwind for a, a lot of the time. It's just like a cooldown recovery. Cooldown recovery, let's say you need 15 because you don't have any on your belt. Even with a vacant cast on crit and our current uh, setup of using stuff, you can get 15% cooldown recovery together like it can be seven on your belt eight on your boots whatever you just need 15 together and you are perfectly fine you don't need more than that and we look up boots let's say we have like movement speed let's say we need like 25 at least and get some es like 60 es at least and and total elemental res should be around 30 why is this 5 Divines? Oh, probably because of the ES. Yeah, that, that is... I would not pay that much for that. I've used something like this before. As you can see, it, I'm selling this for 140 chaos and nobody has bought it for like weeks. It has cooldown recovery as an implicit that is from... That is from Eater of Worlds Lesser. So you can just buy like hundreds of hundreds of this and just try to get that cooldown recovery. Where was this? Yeah. And action speed is also pretty good because it's it's a multiplier to your attack speed and all the other stats. It has 140 ES, 30 move speed, 40 cold res, onslaught on kill, and an open suffix for strength. Which is, again, because we have Iron Will, it's a pretty strong stat. And nobody has bought it for 140. And I would consider that a pretty good buy, if you, would, if you were to ask me. So we can add like 140 chaos for the boots in the beginner's price. Now look at the belt as the next one. Our current one is pretty expensive in the terms that it's it's like a simple corrupted item. It's not it's not even something special with an enchanted double corrupted cost priest. It's just the base belt is expensive. If you look at just having crit multi, it's five, six, and twenty divines, and there is not a lot on the market. If we scroll down, we get one for four, but um. And, and getting a second, like a decent second implicit, for example, like movement speed or any other stats is gonna jack up the price like crazy. Getting the base belt is 20 chaos, so if you wanna get the base belt, you have 15 cooldown recovery on your boots, you can just get this for, for 20c. And, um, but if you don't wanna go that route, if you don't have any cooldown recovery on your belt, strength is still a pretty, pretty strong option for you so i i used something like this before it's a heavy belt with tier one strength and um and like tier one cooldown recovery it was completely unnecessary to go for 19 but i was just did it anyway because i didn't know how the cooldown recovery works uh, you can get something like this for like 20 chaos if you look up any strength we put it like let's say 60 and then we put cooldown recovery on it 25, 52c, but these probably have other stats on them. So you, you can get something like this for very cheap. Uh, the reason I bought many of this is because you can have corrupted and that's gonna have reduced mana cost. And you can even use increased cooldown recovery rate as a craft. And if you, I, I used to have this and my and my boots with the five extra. So you can you can get it for actually pretty cheap. And this one has like T1 strength. T1 ES, Lightning Grass, you know, it's 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 a pretty strong bat for something like this. So again, let's let's say we, we count this like 50 C and then we count it like five divines on the more advanced version. Next, uh, the helm. This one this one is 
pretty nice. It has the Ice Spear additional projectile. It is a Blizzard Crown base. It gives a bunch of uh, cold damage to attacks. But since we are a higher fan and we have we have this node, ten percent. Uh, wait, uh, we have the Battle Mage, which we gain added spell damage to the damage of our main handed weapon. So even this adds extra cold damage counts. And your treats, your uh, hit treat cold resistance at ten percent higher than your actual value, which which means that the enemy, which is like, god damn it. <laughs> Oh, my ability to speak. Holy shit. It's like a negative 10 um, elemental pen for you. It's like you have 10% less elemental pen. That's that's what it should count as. Jesus Christ, that was really difficult to say. Holy shit. Wow. What the fuck? Anyway, and it has the plus one power charge from the Warlords. And then we have 14% uh, crit multi, which is tier 2. And it's a and it's a pretty big damage increase. I up I crafted strength int on it because it's a nice damage increase. But um, I probably should have made like stats on it, like not, I mean not stats, resistances on it. The ability to speak is just not for me, man, today. So something like this costs a bunch of currency if we just count power charge, ice spear additional projectile, and we count the base. It's 14 divines. It's exactly the same as I bought mine for. Damn. Pretty pretty consistent. 15 divines, 23, 25, 30, 50. So yeah, it's it's an expensive one if you want to count that in. But if you want to look at some cheaper options, we have an actually pretty pretty strong one on our hand. We have the eyes of I don't know. Crown of the Inward Eye. Not crown of the Pale King, thanks. Crown of the Inward Eye, and we can just have... Also, a really useful tool is if you press Alt-1 on your keyboard, you get this tilde day sign. And if you put anything in here, it will try to match it up. It not, it's not like it's looking for an exact match, like the regular one. Like, it's not looking for, like, this. Anything that has life in it. It's gonna bring up anything which is related to life. It's gonna bring up anything. Pretty, pretty useful. So now we look at power. And we have implicit maximum power charge. And we can find something for like this for like 0 0.8 divines. Like under a divine we can get one. And ideally you want this number to be as high as possible because it's going to give you a bunch of uh, mana and ES. I had one with a 21%. It's 11 divines now, what? That is stupid. <laughs> As you can see, Ice Spear additional projectile and plus one proj with max roll is 37 divines. That's that's expensive. But if you go down as still, 20 is still okay. How much did I sell mine for? It's one or two divines, I think. Whoops. <laughs> okay, that's a fuck up. Anyway. Okay, now this one is 15% with plus one power charge, and you can get this for three divines, and it's a pretty strong upgrade. Damn, I messed up. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna add, if we look at like... Let's say like t uh, 500 chaos, because let's say we get one with cheaper. No, let's, let's say 250, because we get one really cheap. Let's say 250 extra chaos on the beginner one, and 14 divines on the advanced one. Now for the for the neck, we have an astramant an astramantus. It's straightforward. Twenty percent quality with try to get as much attributes on the explicit one, and then have charisma on it. It's like a divine, and and it's and it's a pretty good roll. It could roll up to hundred and thirty nine in total, and we have hundred and thirty four. And it's a divine, pretty pretty cheap if you ask me. So we had another 250C. Mine was also a divine because it needs to be corrupted for the Vivian sect to have a reduced mana cost of skills. So I also count in one divine. That is probably like the cheapest one that I, the cheapest item piece that I have besides the ring. Okay. So we had that. Okay. Currently the prices are 
68 divines on the expensive one and around 4 divines on the cheap one. Just saying. Now we go to the first ring slot. We have a Viv Insect. It's a mandatory for this build, I would, I, I would say. Because of the minus total mana cost of skills for each corrupted item equipped. As you can see, we have a bunch of corrupted items. Some of the places, it's, it's like unavoidable. You cannot have a non-corrupted skin of the lords. You need a corrupted implicit from the Shaper Touch. It's nice to have this corrupted as well with like the Magnate with having the corrupted implicit. Or as you saw, this is also corrupted. And yeah, same with the Aegis Aurora, with the boots, with the helm. If you go for plus one power charge, you it will be corrupted. Just make sure that you balance out all of this stuff to make sure that you don't have zero mana cost because you're using inspiration support and inspiration charges can only be gained if you if you have upfront mana costs. And if you go for all of your corrupt items corrupted, you are not gonna have mana cost and then you cannot gain inspiration charges. That was a passive sentence. Like that was a passive word structure. Why would I say that? That would sound so stupid anyway. Um, and if you go and check, let's just say, if you're going for V, yep, perfect. You don't want something like this, which is like minimum endurance. It's not even that bad to have minimum endurance charges. Uh, like endurance charge on kill, you're gonna have some extra tankiness out of it. But what you're looking for is something which has a veiled mod on it. You want to unveil it yourself because it's gonna be cheaper that way. You want to unveil it yourself and what you're looking for is something like this. I have strength and int on it and... Okay, oh yeah, I don't have those anymore. The other one that you can get is strength and dex, which is pretty strong also, or int and dex. I would go for strength int because those are like the most useful stats for this build currently. Uh, have it 20% attribute quality also. As you can see, it's a pretty reoccurring theme to have as many attributes as possible. Uh, 20 quality it and then try to corrupt it without removing the socket. I feel like this is an extra step. You don't really need to go for this, but I would just count in 10 chaos for the, like, let's say 30 chaos for the base price because it took me eight tries to get this uh, strengthened and the landed corruption, but I got the strengthened for the third try. So yeah, that's that's what you could expect in price. And mine is around like 70, 70 chaos. Oh, whoops. Mine is 70. Because I'm dumb, okay. And then add like 0 0.3. Because we're counting in divines, I totally forgot. I just added 70 to the divine counter. Did we cover all of the items? Oh yeah, the other ring slot. The other ring slot is like actually pretty cheap for beginners because you don't really need anything extra. Do I even have that ring still? Please tell me I have. I should have that ring. I I would I would I would be a little sad if I wouldn't have that. Damn, I did I sell it? Oh fuck. <laughs> well, that sucks. Okay, I don't really have a ring to showcase here. I wanted it so badly. No, uh, okay, so we're going to look that up on POA trade. So what you really need is for the most part you could just be doing resistance fixing. So let's say elemental res should be like 40, let, let's say 50 at least because from the implicit you can get like 30, 40 at least. So let's say we have 30 elemental res, I mean 50. And I think you need dexterity is what I needed from minoring. Minoring. Dude, I, I, I just can't, I can't speak. And then we need to have two prefixes on it. Number of prefix modifiers shouldn't be more than two. Because if you have this, I should specify it to be a ring. Thank you. You can get some really cheap stuff for like one chaos. At this point of the league, you can get something for like one chaos each. And then you can have stuff like this, which is actually pretty strong. 
if you have fire damage to attack, cold damage to attack, this is gonna be added spell damage technically. This this is really good actually. For one chaos, this is a really strong ring. It has 40 dex, 43 cold res, fire and cold res pretty high. And if you don't need cold res and you buy this ring, for example, you can go into your harvest crafting station and then go cold res and change cold res into fire or change cold res into lightning if you don't need it. So yeah, you can get some pretty cheap ring, let's say. <coughs> and then if you have that with the uh, two prefixes, you're going to go to a crafting bench. And if you were doing a lot of unveilings of rings, then you're going to have a mana cost uh, cost uh, da, 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 da. no there should be like a non channeling skills have minus mana cost for some reason I, I I cannot even see it here okay but there is like a non channeling mana cost which you can have roll up from six to seven which can also help you out with your mana situation if you if you have too much mana cost, that that uh, costs four chaos to craft, and then you can just go on TFT and find somebody who doesn't ask ask extra money. So let's just say we count in like fifteen chaos because you want to get yourself a better ring. And what I'm using right now is, well, it's pretty expensive. It's yeah, this ring is not cheap, but it it's a crazy ring. It's absolutely insane. I can just quickly showcase it, just how strong it is. Let me just get another ring, because I need it for my decks. Okay, this doesn't increase my damage at all, so we can just... I still don't have enough decks, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to showcase that how good it could be. How much decks? I need two decks already. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, this is so bad. Anyway, it's gonna work like this. Okay. A bit higher, higher mana cost this way, but I don't care. So let's just take a Dunes map. And I'm gonna run two maps, just with the boss kill. And this is gonna be without the Nemesis, to just show how the baseline of the build would work without Nemesis. And then we're gonna do one with Nemesis, and you will... I feel like you will see the effect that it's gonna be just a little bit different if we're going we're just deleting enemies and we have the couple of ice spear projectiles firing ahead of us or like towards the target and then it's get and then it gets uh, concentrated and it's pretty strong yep that was a pretty fast kill don't you think and now we're gonna go on to the Onto this one, which is just absolutely insane. You will see why. We are firing a few extra projectiles around, don't you think? Which is actually not, not extra projectiles. Nimis doesn't give extra projectiles. It just fires your current projectiles at a random direction instead of firing them in a predefined way where they should be going, but then they also return to you. Which which means that if an enemy can get hit by projectiles on the way out and on the way back, so essentially you can get double damage. Look at this cute turtle here. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for getting distracted. And Usually you would use something like uh, an Assassin's Mark, which we are currently not using because with the way Nimis works, we can use Sniper's Mark and the five extra projectiles we are gaining against rare and unique enemies, they don't count into the damage when they are going out, but they count when they are coming in, so we're getting five extra projectiles, which is insane DPS. So we're gonna count in 35 plus extra. For the divine cost and i feel like we have counted everything which is in physically equipable now we have a couple of things on our passive tree a 
let's just take it let's just take a look at the jewels for example what we need here is a double crit multi it's like 10 chaos but if you want some attack speed on it it's like 22c 69k nice and then one divine one divine i would i would guess it's like one divine if you want something like this and then you need another one like this it's attack speed with one-handed weapons and then double crit multi two divines so these two cost um three divines together but if you are just looking for something basic you can do like attack speed one time crit multi and then you can have either strength int strength int you can fix resistances with these jewels so it's it's pretty it, it really depends on how you want it uh, what's something that is also pretty build defining when it comes to cast and crit builds is a militant fate with the high templar dominus line in the beginning because we need inner conviction which is three percent more spell damage per power charge there is this thing which is yeah eight percent increased damage per power charge that is a lot and i mean a lot of weaker than three percent more damage per power charge because that is a damage multiplier currently we can have six power charges which is an 18 percent overall multiplier to all of the damage you have uh, and when it comes to increased damage there is a lot of stuff that gives you increased damage this increased core damage increased elemental damage increased core damage per dex in strengths whatever this gets added to that so that is another way of increased damage and there is a lot of them you add them together it's not really significant when you get like six times eight percent increase but when you take all of that and then you multiply it by 1.18 that's that's a big damage increase so that that's why it's a really important node and to get that we need a militant fate with dominus on it any number will do just need to be dominus and then i have increased defenses and increased elemental damage i feel like it's pretty strong this combo it's like 100 c uh, what you could also be getting is instead of either of them depends on which one you want you could get reduced uh, mana cost of skills or increased effect of non-curse aura is something that a lot of people are doing and that depends uh, per 10 devotion now as you can see it changes these stats if you don't have this these are giving 10 intelligence each but now they're giving 10 devotion and in this range you can get 55 devotion 5 5 and then these are all giving 10 and this gives 5 so you can count that in as like having 55 devotion and then multiplying it by five each stats that you see here now the next thing okay so we're gonna add like 50 and then we're gonna add like 100 chaos to the beginner one and then i'm gonna add like like 0 0.5 for example to the to the more expert one uh, now we have these large cluster jewels it's eight passive 12 percent increased core damage with three large notable skills uh, this needs to be prismatic heart call to the core and widespread destruction now why does it need to be widespread destruction because if it's these three it's gonna be in this order call to the core is very useful because it takes advantage of the amount of stats that we are stacking uh, prismatic heart is is more elemental res and it's always useful and it's a pretty big damage increase widespread destruction we don't really need area of effect and it's a smaller damage increase and it's going to be in this way so you only have to take this small passive these two notables and then you can go to the jewel sockets immediately something like this with eight passive uh, just having large cluster and these uh, three notables it's one divine each and i have two uh, I would f say it's pretty necessary because you don't really want to skip out on on points that you can save from this. So it's that means that you can use them earlier. Even if you don't have level 100, you can use them earlier. So I would add 500c to the beginner one and two divines to the expert one. Why does it always keep resetting? Plus two, okay. I, I really dislike that it's it's resetting every single time okay so the current state is 
1800 chaos for the beginner one and 103 divines for the expert one. For expert. Um, and now we get to the medium cluster jewels. I'm using four uh, medium cluster jewels with either four or five passive skills uh, with projectile damage. And one of the notables is a repeater, the other one is eye to eye. Uh, now this is really strong because of the nearby enemies take more damage from projectiles. It's gonna apply to basically all of the enemies which are near you because you're going to be spinning directly into them and they're gonna be uh, targeted by your <coughs> ice spear projectiles directly. So let's see, how much is this? I to buy repeater. What extra it has, it doesn't really matter because it, we're just taking one point. Something like this is 50 chaos. And we have four of these, so it's 200 C on both sides. Plus 200. Plus 0. Point, how much is this? 0. 0.8, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Do I have anything interesting before we get to the other stuff? No, not really. <coughs> now, what else we have is three, like two small cluster jewels with three passive 6% mana reservation efficiency. And one of them has self control for discipline mana reservation, and the other has spiteful presence for hatred mana reservation efficiency. Now, if we just look up this. 3 passive RMR and self control. It's 40 chaos. But if we take it into take into account, for example, this is 13 ES. Now that's a divine. This is 11 strength. This would be still one divine. That's kind of how much I bought mine for. This also has oh wait, that's the wrong one. Spiteful presence 13 ES. Again, it's it's a divine. If you want to go really hardcore, I would not go for self-control or spiteful. I would just get um, item level 84 small cluster jewels with 35% increased effect of node. And then get the like insane stats on them. It's like 12 divines per small cluster, but I don't have those. And I don't want to get those because I feel like it's it's fine the way, way it is. So for the beginner ones, we're going to add 80 chaos for the two. And for the expert one, we're going to add two divines. Okay, so the next one is the Watcher's Eye. Is What I would go for in the beginning is having this... Uh, no, not this. This gain energy shield per enemy hit while affected by discipline. That is going to be insane amounts of recovery. Because... We have a cooldown recovery of Ice Spear of 10 seconds, which uh, 0 0.10 seconds, which means we can cast it effectively 10 times a second. That's going to be more like 9, 9.5 if we optimize it well. I mean, if we optimize it really well, that's going to be 10. But most of the time, it's going to be like 9.5. So, and each projectile can hit the enemy twice for us with Nimis and once with just the regular one. And we have Cyclone also hitting 10 times a second. So it's. 10 projectiles, I mean, just how many projectiles? 9 projectiles, 10 times a second. That's 90 projectiles, all giving us 23 ES on hits. So that's insane. And we also have the Cyclone hitting like 6, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10 times a second. That's another 230 ES regen per second. And that can be managed against single target as well. Like you can count on it if all of your projectiles hit the target. So that's insane. And you can get that for two divines. So that's that's crazy. What I have as an extra as uh, call damage while affected by hate while hatred, and I told you earlier that this call damage gets added to ice spears damage, and that is a pretty significant uh, damage increase. It's a bit weaker than what you can get from Blizzard Crown, but it's still it's still a pretty strong upgrade. Now, I've bought this for 3 or 4 divines, I think I've told this on one of the earlier videos already. I've managed to snipe this for, as I said, 3 to 4 divines, but if you look these up both, there is one for 5, that's pretty nice, and the rest is like 12 and 17. When I was looking the other ones up, it was 20 divines to buy something like this, so it I got pretty lucky, but you can still manage to get one for 5 divines if you want something really strong 
You can also get like flat crit chance if you are affected by hatred. But um, I feel like this is the way to go. So we're gonna add 500c to the beginner one. And I'm gonna add, let's say, 10 divines to the more advanced one. And now this is the part where we get to which you don't have in the in the beginner one. As you can see, you have two other jewel sockets. For these, you would just want more jewels like this. With crit multi, attack speed, any other stats. And you can get those for like 80 chaos together. If you just really want something cheap. You could also get 5% uh, reduced meta cost of skills on these slots, by the way. If you really want to. But I have here a Sanctuary of Thought, Forbidden Flash, Forbidden Flame combo. This is absolutely insane. For the max mana extra, yes. Re increased mana reservation efficiency and ma less mana cost of skills. Now the problem with this is that it's 75, 78, 80, 110 divines. And the counterpart is kind of cheap, but it doesn't work with just only having one. Now it's 3, 4 divines. Damn. I mean, it's still 80 vines in total. I bought mine for 85. I think. I think around 85. So we're gonna add a pretty big bulk here for 82 divines with the current prices, I think. And this is all the equipable stuff. Now we are going to get into the jewel, like the skills. For the most part, I don't even really want to count anything special. Like, we could each individually price check every single jewel like oh my god how much is a 2020 cast on crit 25c but you can just level these in like while you are like doing your other leveling stuff or you can just i don't know buy a 120 or just get a level one and level it as you exp experience the build and how it works and such so i wouldn't really count every single one just like the more important ones i have a level 21 discipline which is 40 chaos. I, I, I would buy this if you're starting at this build, like 40 chaos for this much Yes, I wouldn't really think about twice. And I also have a 21 precision, 25c, so it's like nothing really special, but you get extra crit and accuracy rating from it, which uh, both of them are useful. I don't have a 21 hatred, what the f Okay, that needs to be fixed. <laughs> it's 50 chaos. Okay, I'm gonna do it after we finish with the we finish with the video. And you can also get a 21 determination. Let's see, 21. Again, another 50 chaos. Oh my god, we're gonna spend 100 chaos on this build. What the shit? Jesus Christ, that's insanely expensive. <laughs> we have an enlightened three, which is 100 C. It's pretty cheap. If you just buy a corrupted one, if you buy an uncorrupted one, that's gonna cost you a lot of money, but um, let's see how much is that. Uncorrupt level 3, 2.1 divines, yep. Okay, we have cast and death portal set up, I have a faster attack, shield charge, freezing pulse you could use, ice nova. Um, and the big, mana, the, the big money is coming from this part, your main 6 link. Just having this... Anomalous Ice Spear is really really important to have an Anomalous Ice Spear because the extra pierce is gonna allow you to have some better map clear and it's also gonna let you deal with multiple bosses at the same time if you're doing an invitation for example. Uh, if, if you just go get a regular one like this 2120 is 1.3 divines. If you just get a regular 2020 it's 5 divine it's 5 chaos. If you get a 2120 it's 120 C. So this is really cheap to just get a basic one going. So we added the 120 extra chaos for this. And also maybe for the discipline I can count that in. The rest can be uh, 2020. But if you want something like this, 2120 anomalous high spear, 19 divines. So that's that's where the extra money comes from. Plus 19. Uh, I have a Divergent Cyclone for more movement speed, you don't really need this. You can just use a regular Cyclone, 20 chaos. This is like nothing, it, it can be level 1. You can just literally buy one from from Lily 
and you will be you'll be good to go. The damage itself doesn't really matter, but if you buy a divergent one for more movement speed, 1.4 divines. That's just plus 1.4. Okay. Next we have a vacant elemental focus. For the most part, you can just use regular gems instead of the awakened ones, and that will cut you like a lot of a lot of currency. Most of these support gems can be bought for 20 chaos on their own. Awakened 520 is one divine. Pretty pretty cheap actually for a really nice damage multi that we get with the plus one support and the 40% more LE damage. I'm gonna count in another divine. Uh, now we have a vacant cast on crit. This is really really sick because if we look up the regular cast on crit that is in the in this section. If you look up the regular cast on crit, as you can see, it doesn't have cooldown re uh, reduction or cooldown recovery increase. It only has attack crit and spell crit with the quality, and uh, the spell damage decreases with more levels, and that's it. With the vacant one, you you are actually getting cooldown recovery, which is gonna increase your damage by miles. Miles of damage is gonna come from that being an awakened one. This is one divine currently, so you are not really like you don't really need big investments to go for the big DPS. If you're if you're playing this build, just save up that one divine and get an awakened cast on crit. That's gonna that's gonna increase your DPS by a ton. And also, as you can see, the more levels it gets, the more the cooldown recovery goes up. It goes up by the plus two from the skin of the lords, and we have this. Nope. We have this passive, which level up, uh, which grants plus three level of all critical support gems. This is actually counted by this. This is a critical support gem, and it's getting three extra levels. Which is, if I were to just remove this, that would be twenty-eight. We are getting seven percent cooldown recovery because we have this. And if you wouldn't have this, there is no way we're getting all of the cooldown recovery from one item. And if we don't have this cooldown recovery, we are getting like only like half of the DPS that we could actually be having. It's pretty pretty nice combination of the two working together perfectly. Um, I'm using an anomalous inspiration. As I said, regular one just 20 chaos, but the anomalous one has more uh, like increased crit chance. As you can see, 120 C, not even a divine. Uh, but there is also, I think it's divergent inspiration, which has even more reduced mana cost of skills. Instead of 37, that's gonna give you like 44% reduced mana cost of skills. That's like a divine or two, I think. But um, it's it's like not even one extra divine. So we're gonna count in like 0 0.5. Now the big one is a vacant GMP. Regular GMP 20C, this one has one more projectiles over regular GMP and it's 24 divines. Because it's giving you an extra proj and has a smaller less projectile damage. Which means that you have, you're have you going to have more damage at the end. So I'm going to count another 24 onto maybe like 120 for all the support gems and everything in your main 6 link. And the rest, yeah, we could count in like having a, a dying sun, which is 15 chaos. Not even gonna count that in in the total for the for the expert one, for the current one that I'm doing. Bottle fate not really necessary. Only against the boss fights, you're gonna have a hundred percent crit chance. It's like two divines, I think. Yep, two plus two. And then I have some nice flask, a specialist diamond flask for gaining uh, flask charges when you deal a crit on all of my flasks. All of this together costs like 150c, maybe a divine, if you if you go for really, really good ones, but I feel like you don't even need to go that far. You can just get some smaller chance to gain flask charges when you deal a crit, or smaller numbers on other stats, and all of them are used when charges reach full, so you can sustain them against boss fights too. So I would, I would, I don't know, count in like 100, and 100 chaos for the beginner one, because you could get some cheap ones. And then like one divine for mine. 
So the total cost of all of this in the beginner version is 3064. I could have been 69 or whatever. 3064 chaos, which we divide by 250. 12.25 divines is like it's not even a bare minimum. It's some it's a build that has actually pretty nice items. It has all of the necessary working parts. So it's it's working pretty solidly on a foundation of just 12 divines. And then you can get some gradual upgrades as you go on. And if you look at my current version, it costs 250 divines, and it's insanely good. I'm super happy with how this turned out. I literally started from this and went into this over the past couple of days, while also managing to waste so many divines on gambles and stuff like that, but, um, you know, that happens. In case you have any questions about the build, of how it's working currently, what for example, what else could you be doing differently? I just feel free to ask. I will be more than happy to answer in the comment section on Discord. In game, actually, somebody has messaged me in game that they've seen my profile on PoE Ninja and they are having mana issues. What could you do? And yeah, you can just you can just use like a better inspiration support. There is also anomalous greater multiple projectiles which you could be using instead of awakened GMP that also has. 20% reduced mana cost of skills. I just totally forgot to mention that's like 150c at this point. So there is... If I've left out anything, just feel free to ask. And I will try to answer it as best as I can. And um, my voice is really bad. I need to drink something. It feels horrible. I didn't prepare any water. So yeah, until the next video, guys. See you later. Bye!